morning, everyone. Um, well, hopefully I'm a better public speaker than I am a sheep hanger upper. Uh, to the left, Rebecca Corliss's work. To the right, mine. So <laughs> we can only go up from there, right? Um, well, again, good morning. Um, I wanted to talk to you about Social Media for Social Change. Um, it's an organization that I started. Uh, talk about the inspiration for it and kind of how we went about organizing our first event. So. Well, to start, and uh, Bob kind of stole my thunder here. Uh, you know, the Boston social media scene is exactly that. It's social. Um, whether it's a conference or an unconference or a camp or a breakfast or, hey, let's go out and get drinks, we're down for it. And, you know, if Bob sets up something, there's at least 30 of us that are automatically going to be there, and we kind of do that for everybody. Um, Back in July, I had an idea for uh, creating a tweet up or a get together, but I wanted it to be something different than the, hey, you're in social media, I'm in social media, let's pat each other on the back type events, type of event. Um, so really I was like, okay, let's do something, but actually do something that means something. Uh, so I said, okay, my first kind of idea was a social media fundraiser. Let's throw one event, just raise as much money as we possibly can, and then you know we'll all feel good afterwards. Um, so, um, the initial polling that I did was like, you know, I could sell about forty to fifty tickets. So I was like, okay, well that's too many people to just like, hey, let's take over a bar. So you know we're gonna have to find some space. We're gonna have to actually do some legitimate organizing. Um, so I started talking with uh, Radius, which is a restaurant in downtown Boston that I used to work at, about reserving their space. Um, I set up a very, very basic blog at sm4sc.com. Um, hopefully you guys have all forgotten that design. <laughs> and then I just started talking on the different social networking sites that I'm on. Uh, Google Grading Trip and you'll find me. Um, but right away I noticed something was up. You know, whenever I, I talked about what I wanted to do, um, I talked about Django Incorporated, which is the Boston-based anti-violence, uh, anti-domestic violence organization that I was raising money for. Um, you know, people were talking that, hey, this is something different. You know, this is something new. This is something that can grow and multiply not just in Boston, but to other cities, and you know, maybe even around the world, uh, if we take Brian's model with social media breakfast. And right about now is when my friends came in to uh, lend more than a hand. Uh, you know, people like Matt Nell, uh, Rebecca Corliss, uh, Dimitri Gunn, who I think is not here, but um, Meg Fowler, I don't know if you guys have heard about her. <laughs> You know, and, and just a score of others. You know, they lent an amazing amount of time and expertise. Uh, you know, really without their help, this first event, uh, this organization that I'm getting all the credit for, wouldn't have happened. You know, so for that, I am uh, I'm truly grateful. But how did we do it? You know, and I think that's kind of the question everybody has. You know, if we're social media for social change kind of get an idea of the tools that we use. So, I mean, I already told you we set up a, a, a blog. Well, luckily Matt Nell is a whiz when it comes to things like the internet and created a website in about three minutes. Um, I created a Facebook group very early on and what I noticed was by putting it somewhere like that, uh, it grew at an exponential rate to the point where people, I mean, in a matter of a day or two, people that I didn't know and that my friends weren't connected to were joining this site. You know, it just had that viral effect, if you will. Um, and then, you know, we, we registered and sold tickets through Eventbrite, which allowed us to embed that directly into our site, allowed us to share that link throughout the internet, and it really helped to uh, you know, spread the word. Um, Rebecca, along with Jessica from Turpin Communications, 
sent out uh, an SEO optimized press release that went to hundreds of different websites uh, and gave Social Media for Social Change a little bit of Google juice. Uh, to the point where, you know, if you Google social media for social change, um, I think right now I'm number two, for, but for a few solid weeks, I was definitely number one. Nice ego boost there. Um, and then Twitter. You know, by far, Twitter has been the most powerful channel that we've had for getting our message across. Um, and really the strength of Twitter is in exactly what Beth had just mentioned to us. It's the retweet. You know, by, by me sending out a message through the sm for sc channel, or Rebecca sending a message, or Matt, or Meg, or anybody, all of a sudden, you know, Rebecca sends a message, Maria picks it up and retweets it, you know, Beth grabs it, it's every, you know, it just goes on and on and on. And it really helps to build that brand presence, to build the awareness for Jane Doe, and to ultimately help raise more money for our group. So, you know, the big question is how did we do, you know? All in all, uh, we raised just a, a little over $21,000 um, in personal, foundation, uh, and corporate sponsorships and in-kind donations. So. You know, and, and through that, I think there are lessons learned. You know, I, there are three things that I really took away from this that <clears throat> I think you guys that are in marketing and PR will understand. Um, there are three major components that I, I, I really am taking from this first event, not applying it as a model. Um, and I think anyone can really do the same. You need an idea. You know, uh, what's the idea and how are you going to relay that to your audience? And number two is tools. What tools are you going to use? There are countless social media tools out there. But you need to pick the ones that are strongest for, you know, your own use. And then three is, you know, build off of your community. Let them take charge and let them contribute what they will. Uh, there's that. Uh, as far as our next event, um, we are going to uh, be hosting an event on April 3rd of 2009. It's going to be in New York City. Um, and, you know, just to kind of keep the rivalry going, when the New York people heard that we raised $20,000, they scoffed. They were like, you know, New York's easily good for 30 to 40, and I'm going to hold them to that. Um, we're still debating and you know, deciding on uh, which charity to go for. Um, you know, ironic that we're contributing to the food bank because we've decided that hunger is going to be our focus for the New York event. Um, and I'm sure you know the folks from Greater Boston can back me up on this, but the failure of the financial institutions in New York has absolutely destroyed the hunger relief programs in the city. So. We're gonna do what we can. Um, and if you want to get hold of me, uh, again, Google Graden Trip, and you'll find me. Or uh, email is Graden at GradenTrip dot com. Pretty easy. And I don't know. Questions now, later. I'll just do probably a little couple Q and A a little bit later on. Excellent. Thank you very much. <laughs>